Welcome to the Environment and Sustainability Horizon Scanning Update for Quarter 1, 2023. UK Environment and Sustainability Regulatory Biodiversity Net Gain As part of England's Environmental Improvement Plan, 2023, there will be a new requirement for most new UK developments that are subject to planning to provide a minimum of 10% biodiversity net gain compared to the condition of the site before construction from November, 2023. There will be a preference for achieving this on site. Biodiversity net gain must be maintained for at least 30 years. Developers that create biodiversity that exceeds 10% may be able to sell excess biodiversity units, subject to key requirements. Part L of the building regulations is changing. From June 2023, new built homes must produce at least 31% fewer carbon emissions, and new non-domestic builds must produce at least 27% less. New minimum efficiency standards for walls, windows, doors, and heating systems have been introduced. New metrics for measuring energy efficiency and ventilation have been added, and new regulations require preparatory work for future electric vehicle charging points. A second edition of the Carbon Reduction Strategy for Wales, towards net zero by 2050 is being published. This will lead to new policies, affecting projects in Wales, including land use planning, housing quality standards and zero waste to landfill. The transition of Welsh industry and energy sectors to net zero could increase prices of construction materials sourced in Wales in the short term. The minimum energy efficiency standards regulations in England and Wales have some new requirements. As of the 1st of April 2023, all existing tenancies must have a minimum energy performance certificate of E-rated or above. Further changes are anticipated in 2025, 2027 and 2030 which will increase efficiency standards further. There is a proposal for two new requirements to building regulations to be developed. This would mean whole life carbon emissions would need to be assessed and reported for each project and minimized wherever possible. UK Environment and Sustainability Guidance Letty's Circular Economy Summary provides a definition and an explanation of what circularity in a built environment context comprises. A new British standard, BS 25700, Organisational Response to Modern Slavery, has been published. It is a guideline to organisations rather than a certifiable standard. The UK government have revised its procurement guidance on modern slavery. This increases the emphasis on risk assessment and requires government procurers to consider modern slavery risks more robustly. It may lead to more scrutiny of practices in future tender processes. CONIAC, the Construction Industry Advisory Committee, have produced three draft papers on the safety of alternatives to diesel. These are HVO, solar PV and lithium-ion batteries. Global Environment and Sustainability Guidance The Dutch government have announced an ambition to become a circular economy by 2050. Besides a change to the Dutch building regulations, no legislation to enforce elements of the circular goal in 2050 has been passed yet. 
All Dutch planning applications for new-built homes or offices must demonstrate that their environmental impact assessment meets 0.8 or lower. The EU Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive is being introduced which sees a revision of the Non-Financial Reporting Directive. It may directly affect around 49,000 EU companies, many of which supply the construction industry. RE100 is a global initiative, bringing together the world's most influential businesses committed to 100% renewable electricity. There are two changes to the technical criteria, coming into effect on 1 January 2024. This sees a change to its definition of the single market for renewable electricity in Europe, and an introduction of a 15-year commissioning, or repowering date limit for renewable electricity purchases. The revised Global Reporting Initiative Biodiversity Standard is being developed. This will include seven disclosures for organizations to report information about their biodiversity-related impacts and how they manage these impacts. The RICS is consulting its members on an update to the whole life carbon assessment methodology. A new addition would extend coverage to all built assets and infrastructure over the whole life cycle. A new rating tool, from Well, focused on diversity and inclusion, and a framework for measuring equity in ESG reporting, has recently been launched. The Task Force for Nature-Related Financial Disclosures is producing guidelines for organizations to report on nature-related risks as part of a risk management and disclosure framework. The guidance is currently in draft and is expected to be released in September 2023 as a voluntary disclosure mechanism and it could become mandatory in the future. This was a production of the Sustainable Construction Zone. Thanks for joining us, and see you next time.